Let's get this going. Authorization 1 is going to be the resolution on analysis. The subpoint A is the resolution the United States federal government should end all American combat operations in Syria. The, the subpoint B is going to be that policy on inclusive net benefits is the best criteria for the round, as well as the most equal access and the most predictable burdens and methods of reputation. Authorization 2 is going to be the background. First point here is that the Obama has a long-term plan of, of airstrikes. There's absolutely no one in sight for this. He has just said that as long as, or as long as he feels like it, he's just going to continue to airstrike. The second point here is that airstrikes are the only operations that are being considered, and they're the only operations that are happening. There are no troops on the ground right now in Syria. There's absolutely no operations on the table or in going on. A little, um, this is confirmed by Reuters, CNN, uh, several different sources that say that there's absolutely nothing besides these airstrikes. So the plan next. The United States federal government, through the Department of Defense, will end all American combat operations in Syria. There's your copy. Yes. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. <laughs> Going on to advantage one. Airstrikes bad. Uh, the A is going to be the unique case. One, you can probably have the second background that the airstrikes are the only things that are going on right now. The second point here is that airstrikes are not working as they were intended to. They aren't actually crippling ISIS. They haven't been able to actually take away any strongholds. The little A here is that on, um, on December... Uh, yeah, on December 29th, ISIS um, stopped, stopped expanding out of Syria, but they, we haven't been able to actually stop any of their uh, any of their strongholds. We haven't been able to take absolutely any territory. They're claiming the vast majority of Iraq and Syria right now is being controlled by them. Additionally, they control the majority of the roads going through there, which are essentially key for movement and the use of expansion in the future, or the use of expansion, which means that we haven't actually been able to take away any of this um, at all from them. B is the solvency. One is that plan stops all military action and operations within Syria, which is the airstrikes. Little a is that this uh, this abandoned Obama's plan, his indefinite plan for airstrikes, will not be able to happen anymore because the end date will, will be immediately. The little b here is that we won't be sending officials. There is a plan right now to be sending officials into into Syria to be staying there and advising several different groups, but this won't be happening after the plan because we can't be sending in military officials. Yeah. Okay. Right. See the impacts. What? Civilian casualties. A little late here is that RT reported on, on, uh, on December 26th that, the, that one strike killed 52 civilians and injured 800 others in just, a, just one area. Additionally, the U.S. policy on drone strikes is that of a double tap, which means that we come through once and we sweep through, and then, we, um, then we come back a second time just to make sure that we've killed everyone, which means that by the time we come back a second time, emergency vehicles are usually on the scene, so it leads to deaths of, of individuals who are trying to help the people who have been injured in this, and it just starts to, uh, it just starts to multiply. The little B here is that this creates a mass fear of inaccuracy because the civilians know that they're going to be dying, and they know that these strikes are inaccurate and that they will be continuing, which only further postures them against this U uh, against the U.S. with fueling anti-U.S. sentiment and um, fueling the calls for the U.S. to get out because there's absolutely no reason. Additionally, there are terrorist tactics to recruit into the organization when someone's entire family is decimated by a drone strike. It's a pretty compelling reason for them to be joining ISIS. They have been one of the uh, they have been one of the fastest growing terrorist organizations with reportedly 30,000 troops, which means that you only further their cause and push more people towards it. The second impact here is or, um, urban war warfare makes refugees. You can look to the fact that when people are are fearing for their lives with drone strikes, they start to flee the country. You can look to the Turkish border, which has been seeing a huge influx of refugees. Additionally, we'd say that refugee camps are probably pretty problematic, considering that close quarters lead to the spread of disease that spreads very fastly. Additionally, it's uniquely bad for women because these are um, the women are the ones who are left in the camp, and they have to go out and find water. And when they go out and find water in a war-torn area, they are more likely to be ex to experience sexual assault on their way out because there's absolutely no protection and there are lots of different combatants that are around, which means that they are uniquely uh, they are uniquely impacted by the risk of sexual assault. Yeah. Uh, impact ISIS. Oppression. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Additionally, the, expand, uh, the spread of ISIS uniquely hurts women because of their strict interpretation of Sharia law, where they think that women should not be educated and should not really be allowed outside of the house unless they're in the company of a man, which is going to be uniquely oppressive to women. Going on to advantage to imperialism. A is going to be the uniqueness. One is that strikes are a form of imperialism. The little A is that this is trying to influence the policies within Syria, and this is trying to influence how, how things would play out in other regions of the world, which is specifically what the U.S. does. The B is that this creates a... Uh, the, um, this creates undissolvable ties, pushing them, in, uh, which allows us to strong arm them in the future. When we say, like, look, we solved ISIS for you, it always leads to us pushing them into things like free trade agreements in the future, or making them give us basing rights, which will continue U.S. military presence up, on, uh, like, uh, 
which will continue U.S. military presence for an undiscerned amount of time. Second here is that the U.S. doesn't leave regions um, because of what I just said. We see basing rights. You can look to Saudi Arabia and several other areas in the Middle East. Now you can look to Afghanistan and the fact that we're pulling the troops out, but we're still leaving people in that area, and they haven't talked about the time when they're going to pull out the troops who are training. The third here is that imperialism is um, imperialism is pretty bad. The little a is that mil military involvement is, has been historically shown to lead to more sexual assault in more torn areas. A lot of U.S. troops and like U.N. peacekeepers have been shown to actually um, assault the civilian population, not just by um, sometimes killing people, but additionally by raping the women in these areas. Little b is that this increases um, or that this increases our this creates a hierarchy of people because it creates an economy of us versus them. We think that we just help them and that they're helpless without us. And when we see them as someone who, or when we see them as a population who can't do anything without us, it just forces this idea that they are less than us and that they will always need our help and that we are like rah rah America. Everyone needs our help. Okay, and you okay. The little, the little see here is that this creates assimilation when we use imperialist tactics. We uh, we always try to push our culture on them. You can look to the United Arab Emirate where we uh, went into this area, and now all of a sudden, if you go there, it's extremely westernized. Where they try to push back against these cultural differences, and they want to maintain their culture, but the U.S. pushes their culture. You can look to the fact that like McDonald's is global. The B is solvency. What is that plan withdrawals, uh, withdrawals troops from this area? The second here is that this is a major concession of the U.S. That it's none of our business, and that we shouldn't be um, we shouldn't be in this area striking civilian populations or and trying um, to tell them how to deal with what they're um, going through. The three here is that the U.S. is going to be key because we are the we are the major like we are a major player in the international scheme of things with one of the big like with the biggest military might. It is a huge thing for us to concede that we are not that it is not our business, which means that this breaks down the mindset that we always have to be everywhere and give the power back to the people in this region saying that you don't need us to do it you can um you can do this the impact here is that one um is that one and you basically we saw for all of the uniqueness and the imperialism bad we saw for the ability of the u.s to just go into these regions and have military presences that do this bad thing additionally the second impact is that we saw for the logic of genocide is when we create populations that are disposable and when we think we're better than other people it allows us to kill them off and allows a never ending war the flex? Yep. Okay, cool. Alright, um, first question. Did you talk about how there's been no gains that have come from airstrikes specifically? Yes, we have um, not what been. Is, what, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So, when is that, like, what is the recency of that claim? Like, when did you f discover that we've made no progress? Okay, when I checked the news yesterday, they said that we haven't taken any strongholds. We've only stopped them from expanding, which still isn't taking any of their Right, okay, so stopping them from expanding. In a country where, like, uh, a third of the country was taken over in a matter of weeks, isn't stopping expansion in a matter of uh, another few weeks kind of a significant change? The point is the objective of strikes was to take their stronghold, and the objectives of those strikes haven't actually Right, been. so um, do military objectives always be, are, are they always met on like a week, on a week basis? Is it, or do you think it might take more time than that? Um, we've given it a lot of time. A couple weeks. And if we're not meeting our objective now, there's no reason to keep killing civilians. Okay, thank you very much. Order. This is going to be three off in case. Uh, we do not need this off in case. Yeah. The, we'll have some general responses to their background one, but we're not really gonna get it. We'll respond to it on other sheets. I was about to say, like, yeah, you just told us on the age point, let's save. Yeah. We don't want to sure. That's true. Cool. Okay. Right. Yeah, is everyone ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. Versus Spanish Saudi Arabia liberal relations, the A is unique. This is the first time here. Saudi Arabia relations are on the brink right now. The little A under here is that the BISC re recorded that the Saudis believe that that the United States has abandoned them in the Middle East. That that's the idea that they uh, ba basically have looked to Pakistan for nuclear weapons on uh, have put nuclear weapons on hold for Pakistan to basically. Uh, have a fast act if they were, if necessary. The, the little beep one we have under here, though, is that in uh, uh, Prince uh, Batter confirmed in two, 2006 that Saudi, uh, that Saudi Arabia said that they would have nuclear weapons or friendship with the United States. The second you explained it on here is how Saudi Arabia U.S. cooperations on Syria is strengthening ties. The little A on here is that King Abdullah specifically said that he was glad that the United States and Saudi Arabia were working together to fight ISIS. The little beep one on here is that Saudi Arabia is, number one for, is the number one foreign supporter of the FSA designated groups. They specifically said, uh, since 2013. The third you explained on here is that 
Uncertainty is increasing in Saudi Arabia right now. Little Abdul here is a king. Abdul is physically sick. Uh, he's sick. He's uh, under uh, undergoing uh, physical sickness, basically. He's suffering, and individuals are not certain about his uh, basically if he'll survive. But the people want to hear is that this is the, there's been a long time since there's a change in uh, kings in Saudi Arabia, meaning that this concerns bees and links. First thing I'm going to hear is a plan versus U.S. policy uh, unilaterally, and it caused a knee-jerk reaction from Saudi Arabia. The little here, Saudi Arabia has made a, uh, has a nuclear weapon on standby from Pakistan. Little B one here, Saudi Arabia said that Plan B is to go to the nuclear weapon. The second point on here is that Saudi Arabia's weapon needs to. Uh, Basically, it needs to just make the call. The little AM here is in the summer of 2013. Experts, uh, the defense uh, publishers at IHS said that there's a new missile launch system in Saudi Arabia recently set up. The people in here is that they threatened that the worst, though, what would happen is that if Iran were to get a nuclear weapon, they would do so as well. See what's internal links. First, the internal link here is Saudi Arabia. Defense strategy dictates a swift action. Little AM here is that ISIS said that they would strike Saudi Arabia if they were to gain a, a weapon. But the people in here is that. Uh, it would take two hours for Saudi Arabia to airlift a nuclear weapon from Pakistan. The sequel in here, Saudi Arabia, it right now is working with the United States against ISIS, meaning that they will they don't feel as if they need to have a nuclear weapon. Second point in here, second internally, nuclear response. The A point in here is that it, it, the CHES in March 2013 said that the, that Saudi Arabia is still considering to have a uh, housing and nuclear weapons. But the people in the years of Pakistan has said that not only would they sell the weapon, that they would go through the airlift process to give the weapon to the Saudi Arabia. Impacts. The first impact is there's a miscalculation related to all nuclear war. The little A point in here is that there are thousands, there are hundreds of princes in Saudi Arabia, and if one of them were to die, this would lead to a fall of nuclear war. Because what would occur is that these individuals will protect not only the individual power in their nation, but the little B point in here is that this specifically map won't check back in the sense because Saudi Arabia, we've said, has gone to swift action, even that they will take this the fast action. Second point in here is that this would lead to an economic collapse, and this would lead to the result of death of millions of individual nuclear winners. Since what would happen is that if a nuclear weapon were to go out, this would cause a the whole in the ozone layer, which causing cold when it happened for 10 years, which means you don't have food and you don't have people survive. ISIS is a disadvantage too. Easy to use first one of the years. U.S. airstrikes against ISIS in Syria has been successful. The eighth one of the years, the United States launched 100 airstrikes, uh, 100 airstrikes since Christmas. The little, uh, the little B point of the year is that they took out over 40 TSIL armored vehicles. Specifically, the little C point of the year is that ISIS is uh, right now is actually regrouping. Sorry, is increasing its membership. The little, uh, the little D point of the year is that right now there are training camps that are happening in Libya, meaning that ISIS is not only getting more recruits, getting stronger, but the second point of the year is that. ISIS ISIS is uh, taking to using bi biological weapons. A little ape one of the years of the camp commander of the modern Syrian uh, rebel group confirmed that there was a computer that was taken that had thousands of files on bioweapons to be used and how to basically manufacture them. The little B point of the years that specifically there have been uh, intel found that the bubonic plague is what ISIS is specifically looking to utilize it in chemical warfare. But the C point of the year is that the documents say that the bio, ba basically the documents have said that the bioweapon can adapt to the bubonic plague. These links. First link that here is a plan. Basically, uh, it takes the United States out of presence out of Syria, and it allows ISIS to basically grow a little. And here is a Kurdish Kur Kur forces have said that the United States is specifically key with their airstrikes to take down ISIS. But the little B point of the here is that the U.S. Dr uh, drone specifically stopped ISIS because it stopped not only their basically their strength, but it took down a lot of their armored vehicles. The little C point of the here is that specifically state uh, we don't need that. Seize internals. First internal link down here is that specifically the United the, the United States is specifically going to be keen in this instance. The, this, uh, it's the idea that if we have more fighting instances, this will just lead to a weapon. The little A point here is that ISIS right now has high recruitment, which means that the longer the fights go on, the stronger they get, as opposed to ending them right now. The second point up here is that ISIS right now has a new weapon that they're trying to produce, and which means that the the, the scenario the timeline is now these impacts. First impact on the years of this displaced millions of individuals. The first little point we have on here is that 1.2 million individuals have been displaced because of the wars in Syria, meaning that 1.2 million individuals are not only at risk, but there are more that would be at risk. The second point on here is that this will lead to extinction. One third of the population for, in Europe died to the bubonic plague. But the third and final point we have on here is that they, a full on collapse of Syria would lead to a mass spread of the disease on a global scale. Counter plan President Obama should reestablish the near certainty certainty policy on drone strikes in Syria. President Obama, yeah, unconditional. President Obama should re uh, reinstate the near certainty policy on drone strikes in Syria. We'll talk about what that means.
competition can be through net benefits. You can't stop all military action and still do it. We solve the advantages. We'll see in a second. Solve the The first solve that's going on here is near strictly policy. It's the idea that you Basically, use strikes but have no civilian casualties. The, there's four conditions that have to happen. The first is that there has to be an eminent threat. The second is that there has to be no hope of capturing the individual in question. The third under here is that there has to be no civilian casualties that can possibly happen from a strike. And the fourth one under here is that no one else should, has the capacity to do so. This means that it's basically a last case scenario for the United States. The second point under here is that it was suspended in September. This specifically solves case because this solves double tap, it solves the bad airstrikes that we have, and it will solve the second advantage, which we'll see once we get there. Without the case, the only thing we really need here is that this gives a more certain plan on the airstrikes, thus we have a better long-term plan. What? Just Where's more stuff. So? Where do you want this? Uh, on, on advantage one, but just. On advantage one. First response we have is that the United States League now uh, the United States League now would collapse local co uh, coalitions. The one point under here is the United States leadership provides for a stabilizing presence, which helps unite rebel in Saudi Arabia, uh, Barack, Qatar, and Iraq. The second point under here is the United States being very, very key in coalescing intelligence and resources for regional actors. The little third point, the third point we have here on here is that without U.S. airstrikes, regional actors will be at another strategic advantage. Specifically, it's been said that current uh, individuals report that the United States airstrikes is the only thing that has allowed them to actually have. Progress. The next argument we have under here is that uh, the Kurdish uh, the Kurdish fighters are have found new success and are marching toward the ISIS base in Tel Afar as of, uh, as of last week, which means that they are making progress on the airstrikes. Bad. We saw this specific, specifically civilian casualties and the refugee problem because we don't cause refugees to come out on ISIS on um, imperialism. First argument we have under here is that ISIS winning the war, which means that they'll continue to increase refugees and then have assault, and which will, will make things worse. And on imperialism, specifically, the first argument we have is that we have no physical presence on the ground in Syria. Our presence is in Iraq. And the second argument we have under here is that Vietnam is an example of where we left, which just made things worse, which means we're never going to be able to solve bad for imperialism. All right, books? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, so why were, like, your counterplan, you said it was suspended in September. Why? It was suspended in September for political reasons for Obama to gain capital in the immigration spectrum. Reasons? Like, the Republicans were not super down with it. Yeah. Obama. Yeah. And who are you saying Saudi Arabia is going to fire a nuclear missile at? Saudi Arabia would specifically fire a nuclear missile at ISIS, ISIS. territory. Yeah. Because okay. ISIS has said that if they gain a chemical weapon. Isn't that pretty close to them? Uh, depends on where you're talking about. Like ISIS controls large portions of the, the region, so yeah, they may not bomb their own backyard, more, but they certainly bomb other regions. That's what they're doing because I brought someone on for it. But um, sorry, uh, okay. Um, yeah, and the plague. It's really contagious, right? So who are yeah? Who would they target and not hurt themselves? That's not ISIS. Sorry, ISIS yeah, would get the bubonic plague. And haven't they said that they don't have the ability to decode this weapon? Do you want us to answer? You can. Yeah. Can you say the question one more time? Yeah. Um, haven't they come out and said that they don't have the technology to decode the computer system to use this weapon? No. I mean, like, maybe if they don't have the capabilities now, that doesn't mean they won't have the capabilities in the future. That's our argument. Like, if it already happened, then we wouldn't have to diss at it. Yeah, your is going to be the counterplan. Sorry. Case. Counterplan. Saudi Arabia relations. The only arguments that they're going for is that the United States President Xi, however, you can step across our analysis and says that the only thing that we're actually doing is the airstrikes. It's an indication about all, why all of your argumentation about why we, the, the mechanism which we, we utilize to coalesce intelligence and to train the train Syrian rebels is not usually it does not apply in this instance. instance. Additionally, second, you can step across our issue uh, argumentation says that it says that this only leads to the course of enemy conflict where while well, we even if we didn't, even if we try to respond to this uh, this problem this problem in this instance, it only leads to further problems down the road, uh, road, road so you can look at the fact that 
uh, while the part of the United States invasion of Iraq may have been designed to stop Al-Qaeda, it only led to the creation of ISIS through the United States killing both and calling killing civilians, and that region is an indication to why the, why, you know, why the United States presence is never going to be able to resolve this. The mission next year, you make that regional actors will know be at disadvantage. You specifically isolate the Kurds. However, the response here is that the Kurds are able to take over the status quo. You can look at the fact that, that, the, Kurds population, that the Kurds have taken over 80% of Kobani is an indication of why they wouldn't be able to do, would be able to take over addition. You can look at the fact that the Kurds and the Kurds in, in Syria are, being, are currently being uh, uh, backed up, reinforced by the, by the Peshmerga, being moved, uh, being moved from the from Iraq is an indication of why, is why the regional actors will be able to resolve this. Additionally, the next argument, argument you make is that the Kurds are, are marching towards base and ISIS in the status quo. However, all of the air strikes that we are currently doing are around Kobani and two other cities. This is an indication of why the Kurds are incurred. Kurds are making this advance without the usage of without the uses of the United States air strikes. This is an indication of why the plans are not why they, this is not good plan. Also, extend all, all of our analysis says that not it, this is going to be key on the counter plan, but the strikes that we are doing are not just drones. It's also things like F-22s. It's is an indication to why not only will the, will the affirmative not be why the counter plan is not going to be able to resolve this, but additionally is why the strikes that we are doing, always know we are doing, are killing civilians in the success quo. You can look to the one strike that strike earlier this this year that just killed that earlier like just last week that killed 52 civilians and injured 800. It's an indication to why the United States strikes are always bad. Imperialism. The first argument they make is that ISIS is winning the war, which is leading to refugees. However, this is exactly the argument that we are winning that not only that we create the threat and the threats by only by keeping going, by keeping going in and keeping trying to resolve these issues. However, this is going to lead to further anti-American sentiment, that leads to the creation of new threats. While additionally, the analysis that this is probably not uh, that this argumentation doesn't uh, doesn't uh, doesn't function. The next argument makes that uh, I'll give you a flex, bro. The next argument they make uh, when the next argument they say is that we don't have presence in, in Syria. However, there is still the usage of our airstrikes that is trying to reinforce that is trying to reinforce policy and that we're trying to support the rebels as it is. It has a reason to be able to install this government that we can control some indication of why this would really need to be further imperialism and further uh, damaging uh, damage within the region. The reason why we have to reject this addition that try to make is that if they say Vietnam is, is an example of where we left and that only made things worse, not only did they not provide real analysis on, uh, to this uh, to this warning, how 30 years later Vietnam has gone so potentially better. It's now one of the largest economies in Southeast Asia. It's an indication of why you shouldn't prefer this addition. You can go to the fact that this, uh, you can still look at the fact that the United States presence in, in, in these regions only leads to further sexual assault and print and further damage against the civilian population. It's an indication of why we'd never be able to solve poor. Uh, solve the problems in the first place. Catherine? First argument is going to be firm. President, President Obama should reinstate in the uh, no. should reinstate the near certainty policy on drone strikes in Syria and, and do the plan. Let's do both. Couple of arguments. First, that these two things are mutually exclusive. We can end the combat operations within Syria and still and reestablish this policy. These two things are not mutually exclusive. You can do both, even if, even if the even if the functional second one doesn't matter. Additionally, the second argument the second argument is that these two is that the counter is that the counter plan doesn't solve for the affirmative. You can look to our advanced one scenario where we say things like uh, 22 strikes or we are also kind of as an indication of why they would never be able to resolve for this harm. Additionally, the third argument is that there's no is that they don't solve for advanced truth, just the fact that they still re, uh, still utilize the air strikes as a mechanism uh, within a mechanism that is able to reinforce the United States policy within the, within the areas reason why they would never be able to. We can solve them and resolve the internal problems of this. Of this, this. Additionally, the, the fourth argument is that, is that they can't solve this because of the fact that the military intelligence sometimes lies. They say that there's no civilians in the region. However, we still strike, and then civilians die. This is only going to re and reinforce the same harm and the same violence that, and the violence that is happening against civilian populations in, in Syria and the Syrian and the Why? This would always be worse. On the part, they're not functionally competitive because they're never going to have the conditions to actually strike. Additionally, there's probably been. Uh, you're never going to have the Okay, yeah, yeah. There's also a risk of civilian There's always a risk of civilian deaths, which is an indication of why they would never be striking the burden. However, it's an indication of why this would not, would not resolve for either the disadvantage. It also means that there's no net benefit to the counterclaim no net benefit to the counterclaim because it, 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 it probably bites both Saudi Arabia, especially because if, if we say we're going to strike, but then we never do strikes, it's probably worse. Um, and it's also probably worse for ISIS because it was only, it also probably means they don't solve for their ISIS scenario, scenario because the fact that we don't do the strikes probably means we'll never be able to resolve or the harm they talk about there is an indication of why they are not resolving this. On Saudi Arabia. The first argument is that relations between the uh, United States Saudi Arabia relations are always going to be high. A couple of warrants. Little Acres, you can look to the fact that, they, that we are one of the major purchases of their oil supplies and indication of why uh, economically we have strong ties with Saudi, with Saudi Arabia means what means Saudi Arabia is never going to be uh, is never going to take military action in this way. Additionally, little piece, you can look to the fact that we, that we give them military aid and give them military supplies as an indication of why the strong why the why the United States and Saudi Saudi Arabia have strong ties uh, strong ties that are that are that are durable and it's the reasons why why specifically why in senior action on ISIS is not going to collapse the uh, Saudi, United States Saudi Arabian relationship. Additionally, the second argument is, is going to turn that. We, we, we resolve. Mm. I'll 
deal with that in a second. The next argument is going to be, is going to be no, there's no risk of new, uh, nuclear, uh, it's on the internal and global, sorry. There's no risk of new, uh, nuclear attack because the fallout would, that would, uh, would affect, and would affect Saudi Arabia. You can look to the fact that any part that would happen, that would, they would utilize against ISIS would have to be uh, against, uh, against the population in, in Iraq because uh, be, uh, the fact that not only is the closest one, the only one they'd be able to strike additionally, that, that, that that's on their northern border, and even if they did strike in Syria, it's an indication of why the fallout would, be, would spread throughout the, would spread throughout the region and would, would harm Saudi Arabia is, is reason why they're never be able to use this additionally. The next argument is no, there's no risk of using that use of a nuclear weapon because the fact that the United States mutual defense treaties and the fact that the United States would place pressure on Saudi Arabia to prevent them from doing it in the first place is an indication of why Saudi Arabia would never take this action, would never take this action because the fact that it would mean they would have, have a second strike against the United States. The United States has a strong policy the fact that, that we will not tolerate the use of nuclear weapons in any country, anywhere, is an indication of why, we, why, this, would, why this would never happen. Additionally, fact, and all of your, uh, to all of your internal link and, and unique stuff is suspect at best. Saudi Arabia does not have a does not have a nuke in the status quo, and the, even if they have tried to buy one from Pakistan in the past, the United States has prevented this as an indication to why they don't have access to a quick, uh, quick access to a nuclear weapon. Iran's not going to get a nuclear weapon because they're. Sorry, no, they said that they'll strike if Iran gets a nuclear weapon. That's not going to happen. There's new sanctions on the dollar right now. They, uh, they say that, uh, that, that Saudi Arabia will strike Iran if they get access to nuclear weapons. However, both the United States sanctions and the fact that they don't have access to technical proficiency to be able to get a nuclear weapon, the fact that they've been looking to get a nuclear weapon for a significant period of time, and it's all, all, all indications of why, why Iran would never get it, and get it is an indication of why Saudi Arabia and why this isn't going to happen. Uh -huh. The first argument is turned threatened that the United States strikes that are killing civilians are leading to recruitment in the status quo. You can look at the analysis coming out of the PMC that the way that when we strike civilian populations and lead to death and to the death, leads to a leads to a recruiting drive. The only the only way to resolve or the recruiting for the recruiting for ISIS is to stop the United States strikes that are leading that are creating recruitment tool in the status quo. But additionally, they make arguments about how this not ISIS is going to get a biological weapon. The first argument is they don't have the technical experience in order to be able to develop a new to develop a biological weapon because the fact not only do just a laptop is not does not lead to have lead to a factory that's able to produce a high Amount of biological weapon, additionally, section that they don't have the base disease to develop in the first place. Just having the technical specs does not mean that you have the disease. You do not have the bacteria in order to be able to, in order to, be able to develop a no biological weapon. Additionally, the next argument is going to be turned to be we are able to resolve the, resolve the harm to ISIS by allowing for not for the Kurdish population to roll out for the next murder in order to be able to, the, to, to, to uh, outlash against ISIS without the United States uh, holding, uh, holding back in terms of, in terms of technical support. It's an indication of why Kurds would be able, better be able to resolve this petition. The next argument is there are no risk of, of them using a plague device because that, that would spread back to ISIS and kill them too. Alright, order shall be. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so weird, right? I'm sorry to go. Uh, sorry, flex. Question. Sure. What would be. In, 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 like, what's worse? ISIS having a large presence in Syria or the United States? We argue that the US presence fuels ISIS. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're both very bad, but. So, the United States is worse? Yeah. Okay. Sure, yeah. Worse yeah. That's all right. U.S. imperialism is bad and leads to unending conflicts. That's the entirety of the BMT. Okay. Uh, or at least like two minutes then. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, okay. Question. So, the analysis you have on your impact level of your airstrikes, you mentioned the drone strike to two civilians, double tap. Yeah. Yes. These are all drone stats, correct? Those ones that we talked about there, yes, are drones. However, we also implement the double strike policy for our F-22s. We have been doing a large part of our the airstrikes in Syria with F-22s. But the words it's not the just air, it's not just drones. Right. All right. In fact, drones are just a little. Order is ISIS disad, counter plan, Saudi Arabia relations, uh, and advantages in order. Um, ISIS is able to gain widespread following and take over vast parts of multiple nations within the Middle East without the United States even being involved or even being there before the airstrikes means that the uh, question of recruitment is not even important. This question, the only question is, is it possible for United States intelligence and airstrike in order to keep it from continuing? The question of recruitment is not important. Today we're going to be winning this debate because of the fact that you're just conceding too many arguments on why uh, Saudi Arabia could get access to a nuclear weapon and also specifically that the world, the world, uh, that the, uh, the, the, uh, the Middle East will not be better in a world where ISIS controls it and will behead people and take them into sex slaves. Moving down to the rest of the disadvantage. 
The next argument, you talk about how they don't have tech experience, nor could Kaban plan extend this argument. We're not going for this disadvantage. All I need to do is answer back turn. Increased recruitment is not a question in today's debate round. Of course, that if we uh, stop people from doing evil things like killing people and beheading people and they taking them as sex slaves, of course, that uh, of course that there's going to be backlash when you try to fight evil people, people who do evil things. But our argument here specifically is that we can basically stop the violence through the, uh, the United States. Uh, the United States. We'll get to that on their case, on the counterpoint. On the counterclaim, first of all, they say the counterclaim can ultimately not solve any act. Specifically, the analysis they give under a double tap is specifically drugs analysis, which means that we have the propensity to decrease the amount of lives lost, which means that uh, as long as we are able to decrease the amount of civilian casualties that happen, we gain some traction on solving that for the advantage. Additionally, you also say that the, 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 uh, the, the um, there's, there's no specific advantage to the permutation in a world where that the disadvantages would still get triggered in a world of the permutation because you still leave serious means you still trigger the Saudi Arabia disadvantage, so you get no advantage to your permutation. Additionally, also, they say it's functionally competitive because we'll never strike because the conditions will never be met. Uh, the problem is that uh, a drug strike has been going on for a matter of years and this was only uh, got, uh, was only removed in September, which means that there is absolutely no reason why this would mean that there would be no strikes after the re-implementation of this policy, which means that all we have to do win is that some amount of lives will be saved or the counter plan will be a net, uh, a net advantage to the plan while we're, we prevent the cyber from being to nuclear weapon well. Yeah, um, how many times did we implement this policy while it was in use? I have absolutely no idea. Moving on to disadvantage. We did the strikes before September. Right, we did the, like the amount of strikes, the thousands of strikes we did before September when we banned it. Like that, those all happened before before we uh, got rid of this new certainty policy. The exact number is irrelevant. We did thousands of uh, drone strikes before we got rid of the new certainty policy. There's no reason why strikes would stop after. On the disadvantage. Uh, on Saudi relations, first argument you say that oil provides security for Saudi Arabia and U.S. relations. Or, of course, the oil prices are uh, down a lot. This has caused panic within Saudi Arabia due to shale, uh, shale gas prices in the United States, meaning that this is not a source of stability, but rather quite the opposite. Another brink argument. The next argument you say that we keep military supplies in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia does not care at all about military supplies in world where ISIS is currently knocking on their, on their back door and causing massive civilian casualties within Saudi Arabia. What they want is guaranteed that the United States will continue to be an ally to them, specifically in, Sy uh, in fighting uh, ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Which Means that you take away that guarantee, which is the only possible way we can you you uh, regen, uh, you can prevent generating access. We get access to a link as long as the United States is not aiding uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. The next argument you go for uh, specifically, I want you to extend a couple of arguments. The first is that weapons for Pakistan are on standby now, so we understand that Saudi Arabia does not have weapons, but they have weapons on standby from Pakistan to its nuclear power. Specifically, they can be airlifted within two hours. This argument goes completely dropped, which means you're not winning at the amicus uh, on this question or an internal link argument. Additionally, you um, extend the third argument specifically that there's uncertainty on the future of the King Abdullah, meaning uh, he could die at any time, meaning that there's a lot of political uncertainty and strife within the, within the nation, which would mean that Matt would not check back in a world where a uh, anti United States uh, uh, president. Uh, uh, kings succeeded King Abdullah. Your specific arguments go for especially the turn of fallout. Our first response is that low kill time weapons would not cause a spread of fallout specifically in Saudi Arabia. The uh, original bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki went to a very small area, and the uh, fall and the fallout did not have uh, the widespread effects that would be uh, and that would be enough in order to cause problems specifically for Saudi Arabia. We specifically isolate targets um, in Syria itself that are far away enough from Saudi Arabia to not cause any sort of fallout. Uh, additionally, we'd argue that Madden would also ultimately not check back specifically because of the argument that the king is currently sick and that there are thousands of princes who could possibly succeed. Him. Any succeed, uh, king that succeeded him would be anti-U.S. In, 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 in a scenario where the United States abandoned uh, Syria, which means that you have no arguments on why the United States pressures could check back uh, 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 Saudi Arabia from using the nuclear weapon to defend itself from ISIS if it feels existentially threatened. What you have to understand about this scenario is that, is that uh, Saudi Arabia feels it's existentially threatened by ISIS, looking at what's happened in Syria, what happened in Iraq, and the only guarantee they have currently is that the United States will continue to uh, be allied with them in fighting ISIS. And what we take that away, the disadvantage scenario triggers. I want you to extend the ISIS this is um, uh, specifically the nuclear response in two hours argument that that, that this can be airlifted within two hours, which means that we have specifically risk of nuclear miscalculation. This calculation, we'd argue, does not require math because if they think that they're being uh, existentially threatened, they will still uh, take action in order to defend themselves. Additionally, we'd argue that the econ collapse, econ collapse would be devastating. We'll get to you at the collapse. Okay. Moving on to advantage bomb. On advantage one, specifically, we tell you, uh, you, we talk, you talk about specifically the coalition. You say that they're only doing airstrikes and that there's no either no coalition and no intelligence. But this is just non-responsive. Just because you say that there's only airstrikes in your background doesn't mean you can't respond. You don't get uh, free pass not respond to our arguments that they are doing other things, specifically intelligence and also coalition building. These arguments specifically do not go responded to. Specifically, the argument the United States leadership is stabilizing presence, which helps helping uh, uh, unite rebels in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, and Iraq, specifically, which means that we are winning arguments that the United States president leaves that these uh, coalitions will fall apart, which means that ISIS will gain traction and gain access to more territory. You're, they're going to get up and say that we set airstrikes only in the background, but we provide analysis to why that's to the contrary, and they just 
just repeat their tagline. Additionally, uh, the intelligence issue is ultimately a key. The only way that the Kurdish victories can continue and other victories can continue is a world where they have access to intelligence on the locations of ISIS forces, which means that in a world where the United States intelligence is gone, specifically we have to remove all military presence. This means ultimately that these forces will no longer continue to be victorious. Additionally, also you can say that we're going to have further problems down on the road. Our response, first of all, is that we have no ground presence in Syria. We only have uh, airstrikes, which, which, is what which is the basic point of your argument, meaning that there, the, the further problems down the road is completely outweighed by ISIS taking over uh, that uh, vast part uh, and keeping areas and vast parts of Syria and Iraq, considering that they have killed hundreds of thousands of civilians and caused thousands of uh, refugees already. The, the situation specifically of refugees and civilians is a moot point. The point is that who can basically, what is the best scenario for defeating ISIS? The best way to access is not losing access to all intelligence, not losing access, not having the four rebels lose access to all air support. The best scenario for victory is in a scenario where the United States is specifically involved. You specifically, you make the argument that the Kurds took over specific areas without U.S. strikes, but I'd like to direct you to the argument that we made that these uh, special, that the specific strikes in. Uh, Tell the far were only possible because of United States airstrikes, meaning that there have been gains because of those. Additionally, the United States was able to stop a, a, a large scale offensive, it's kind of a counter offensive, uh, uh, helping Iraq and Syria and uh, Syrian rebel forces to have a counter offensive later this spring. Moving on to advantage two. On advantage two, you're just not winning enough arguments. This is unique, uh, going to be uniquely causing a specific, uh, uh, significant. Uh, Instances of culture size specifically, we give you, uh, we talk specifically how there's no physical presence there. There are only airstrikes. This is not enough to trigger any sort of unique impacts on culture side because the fact that economic influence will always still exist. United States will always still be an economic superpower and promote Western ideologies of economics, which is much more um, damaging specifically to culture than, than airstrikes. Additionally, also there is absolutely no uniqueness to this argument. United States already has presence within the Middle East, which means that we they are better off basically helping uh, uh, indi uh, basically indigenous forces to help win a victory that they should have had years ago rather than abandoning them when they. They actually want our assistance, and there are actually coalitions built around the United States providing intelligence, which means that your advantages scenarios are uh, like are basically basing the idea that people are going to die. However, if ISIS specifically takes over these regions, many more people will die because historically, when they take over regions, they kill hundreds of people, they commit mass so genocide, they commit mass the 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 Extend the impact specifically on the bottom of uh, other advantages. These are all things that are going to happen to an even greater extent than where ISIS takes over and has the ability to control these territories. So from what I understand, there's no flex after this one. Nope, before it's after this one. The it's after the yellow one. With that being said then, the order is going to be an overview on top. So you can pull that on a separate sheet. Or you can flow it on the first disadvantage of Saudi Saudi Arabia relations, since we're going straight there afterwards. Then we're going to look at the 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 counter plan and then the advantages. Does anyone need that one more time? Sorry, my phone's going over. She made sure nobody's dying. It's cool. Okay. Cool. So they were just maimed then? Yeah, something like that. Huh. Horrible explosives or something. It is. Apparently, why do I use some of that? So things we don't really care about. Gordia also does IEs, except they're at health rows over. <laughs> right at HFO. <laughs> Is everyone ready? Yeah. Cool. There are two reasons you're voting for Concordia BB. The first reason you're going to be voting for Concordia in today's debate round is because the disadvantage of Saudi Arabia relations is just too strong. The two hour time frame is something you will not be able to check back for in this instance. But the second reason you're voting for Concordia BB is because the only advantage you're going to weigh in today's debate round is going to be that of imperialism, but that's not going to cause change when ISIS is taking over just worse on Saudi Arabia. Um, Saudi Arabia relations. The only thing you're going to go for here is that there's no risk of a nuclear attack because it would just harm Saudi Arabia. But JP's response is just too devastating at the point to where there it is far away enough for them to not be affected. It's the idea that Syria and uh, Saudi Arabia have a large distance gap of land between each other, and so the specific strikes that they would have would not be would not affect their country. Meaning that Saudi Arabia would take what we outlined in our uniqueness, specifically our, our second and our second uniqueness, and our internal links, our, our first and third internal link. That Saudi Arabia will take with action to basically protect themselves. It's the idea that the United States is the backbone of this instance. This turns case because this means that Saudi Arabia is just going to cause more deaths to occur, more problems to occur. A nuclear war in the Middle East is going to be the worst thing that could ever happen for case. It does not matter if your advantages even happen. This alone will turn everything in your case. 
on the Saudi Arabia relations, the only other specific thing that they can go for is that basically Saudi Arabia does not have, like, will, uh, sorry, the United States will be able to negotiate them out of not getting the weapon. Our two hour time frame checks back. Two hours is not enough time for the United States to gain intel that Saudi Arabia is going to get a nuclear weapon. But that's the that's the argument that we have from the get-go, that the time frame is fast in this instance, meaning that this beats out any any intel that the United States could possibly have, this beats out any argument you have that the United States can check back. When Saudi Arabia feels threatened and the United States says we're ending all operations, Saudi Arabia will go to Pakistan and buy a weapon. Like they said they would. Right. Like they said we would. Like they said they would. We have arguments in our links. Which basically, which go conceded, and our internal links about how Saudi Arabia not only has said they would do so before, has the potential of Pakistan will sell them the weapon. That means that our impacts go across clean. Basically, this will lead to miscalculation, and this will lead to economic collapse of countries in the Middle East. This is the biggest impact in today's debate because it leads to the death of more individuals than your airstrikes and managed could ever garner on the counterpoint. Do not go for the perm, the perm doesn't matter. The perm basically still says this, the kind of plan, the plan happens, which means you don't have airstrikes. Safer airstrikes are always going to be better, since at least having a presence, at least having a presence saying we can help you and assist you is what Saudi Arabia wants, meaning that there's no chance of collapse. Also, the only other argument that they can possibly go for here is that military intel or lies this is just a blanket statement. It doesn't matter at the end of the day at the point to where we specifically outlined that drone strikes have been successful and we have specific studies that show that how drone strikes have been successful in the past week and month even. Also, they're going to go hard for it. They'll never strike. Yet again, the presence is good enough, but we still had plenty of strikes before September on airstrikes being bad. They're going to go hard in the paint for F-22 and basically uh, other forms of airstrikes that are not drone-based. This is specifically going to be problematic at the point where your analysis only looks at drone strikes. And your analysis about why people, civilians dying and double tap happening is only airstrikes. Even if there are bad airstrikes that from F-22s, we will still outweigh that global nuclear war in the Middle East will, will basically be way worse than a, a civilian casualty or ISIS taking over. Or ISIS taking over. Their impacts that they have about why ISIS is bad and ISIS oppresses women is supercharged at the point to where the United States is not there and ISIS is able to gain strength. That is our disad scenario that ISIS right now is weak because of the United States and only gain strength in the world of the uh, affirmative. On imperialism, you're going to go hard, but yet again, there's no uniqueness to this argument. You're not going to be able to chart, cause change. ISIS is always worse than the United States taking over. These impacts don't matter at the point to where ISIS will supercharge any bad scenario you have. No negative. So, so, based on your scenario, Saudi Arabia attacks if ISIS gets a weapon, yeah? No. no. Then why would they, like, when is Saudi Arabia going to pull the trigger on me? What is your ring scenario for that? When the United, our, our, our uniqueness, our internals, and our link scenario says that when the United States does not support Saudi Arabia in fighting ISIS, they will get one and fire one. No, they will fire one in response to miscalculation if they think they're being threatened. So if ISIS has an offensive against their southern border, which they said they would do, then that would be enough in order for uh, Saudi so, okay, Arabia to... So, what's one concrete instance in which Saudi Arabia would press the button on a nuclear missile? If their when country was invaded by ISIS and like a full-scale... A specific impact scenario or first impact says that if any one of their hundreds of princes were to die by an ISIS strike, and ISIS said that they will strike Is Saudi ISIS Arabia... ISIS firing air missiles right now? What? Like, are they you said if a prince dies, are they ISIS firing gets, air missiles? If ISIS gets stronger, they obviously will be able to have access to better weapons and equipment. That's also our scenario. Okay. So, it's going to be a quick overview, and then it's going to be advantage to the counter plan, Saudi Arabia relations, and advantage one. With a non-competitive counterplan and terminal defense on their disadvantage, any risk of our advantage is going to be able to outweigh. Going on to advantage two. You can accept a process that it's a non-unique on culture side. There's absolutely no offense on this sheet of paper. We're not going to be able to solve imperialism because it's just around and they don't either. Going on to the counterplan, you can look to the perm. They never answer back the fact that this isn't functionally competitive.
repetitive. They only um, they only start to scratch on the surface saying that, that this will actually happen, but they can't give you a single answer under which this policy was used, which means that it was probably never used, especially if you can look to the fact that the warrant showed that there were casualties in all of these strikes, which means that this policy is never going to work, so it's not it's, it's not functionally competitive. All the perception arguments that they're going for are going to link as well because the um, because you because it doesn't actually work. The counter plan in function would never strike, which means that Saudi Arabia would what still feel like. The argument that strikes that were made using the counter plan basically pre September killed civilians is brand new. The warrants that strikes kill civilians have been in this entire debate. But specifically that the program being used. Okay, all of your warrants are about December strikes. I so this is this is sort of um, okay, point not well taken because I don't think there is a clear articulation. Um, from either side about, they say that casualties have occurred over the last like six years of U.S. drone operations in general, and you all have not articulated a time frame about when the United States was apparently striking Syria before September. Okay. Uh, so that would lead me to believe that yes, there were probably casualties throughout sure. this policy was. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyways, so the curve works because there's absolutely no functional competition. In a world where the counter plan doesn't actually do anything, it means that the counter plan and the plan aren't competitive whatsoever. Additionally, you can look to all the solvency arguments that Corey makes, saying that they're never going to be able to strike, which means that they don't actually get solvency for the app. When they don't have any solvency for the app, they have a huge solvency deficit for their counter plan, showing the fact that the advantage that they're never going to be able to solve back advantage one, um, that they're never going to be able to solve back advantage one. Either they don't fix ISIS or they continue strikes and they keep killing civilians, which means that there is absolutely no solvency here. And additionally, they never articulate how they actually solve back their disadvantage, which means that their disadvantage is always going to be linking to the counter plan, meaning that there is absolutely no unique reason why they um, no unique reason why they solve this back. So there's no net benefit to the counter plan. There's no reason to do it. Additionally, you can extend across that military intelligence is not always right, which means that they are still linking to advantage one, which is a unique deficit to the counter plan. Specifically, the deficit to the counter plan, because if there is always a risk of a civilian death, then we'll never strike the Saudi Arabia so they just stop. Yeah, exactly. Like oh, what we were saying, it, um, it still links to the Saudi Arabia relation because if we never have the ability to strike, Saudi Arabia is still going to see whatever perception they're claiming, and they're not. They're still going to be striking. Going on to the Saudi Arabia relations. First off, there's terminal defense all over this globe that they are not answering back. When we say that like, Saudi Arabia U.S. relations are always going to be strong, they never answer this back. They say that they don't care about military supplies. Okay, if they don't care about military supplies, then why are they trying to get a nuke? You can extend across that they don't care about military supplies. This is going to take out the fact that they're actually actively seeking a nuke because if they're not caring about military supplies, then they're not caring about the nuclear weapon, which means that they're um, which means that they're um, they're always going to be worried about aid if they're worried about a nuclear weapon. You can't have it both ways. You're, additionally, they're our strongest ally in the region, which means that if they feel threatened, they're not going to be cutting off their U.S. ally. We are the strongest proponent for helping their military. Their military, which means that they're never going to do this. Additionally, I want you to extend across the argument that they would never strike because the fallout wouldn't occur. Also, I want you to note the fact that they can't give us a single instance in which Saudi Arabia would strike, except for if ISIS killed one of their princes. But ISIS doesn't have air missiles, which means that they can't actually strike Saudi Arabia. They would have to invade by foot, which means that their princes would probably be in a pretty safe situation, meaning that this would absolutely never happen. There is zero risk of this disadvantage whatsoever when they're not answering back the fact that we have nuclear treaties that would keep this from happening and that a second strike by the U.S. would mean that they would never do this because if Saudi Arabia struck, the U.S. would strike then, meaning that there is absolutely no reason for this. Miscalculation with nuclear weapons is a myth. It has never happened and it will never happen, meaning that they have zero probability for their impacts and the Saudi Arabia firing a nuke is not going to happen. They can't give us a single instance in which it would. Going on to advantage one, air strikes back. Okay. First off, they say that we're doing intelligent co intelligence and coalition building. This is simply false. You should refer our background where we, give, where we give you two different news sources that say that airstrikes are the only thing going on, which means that we don't actually have a presence beyond this, meaning that you're always going to be preferring, the, preferring these warrants. There's absolutely no coalition building going on that has actually been successful, which means that this is the only presence we have, yes? Even if they are doing it, there's probably non-combat operations, but we're only eliminating combat. Yeah, okay. Even if they are doing it, like, we're only eliminating combat, which means that there's non-combat operation, operations would continue, such as coalition building, so there's absolutely no link to this. Additionally, they can see that Kurds are fighting ISIS. They can see that Kurds have taken over strongholds and that they've been pushing forward and that they've been getting out of Hesmerga and pushing back ISIS, which means that Kurds are going to be able to solve this in the status quo, which means that any single piece of offense they are getting from ISIS takeover 
isn't working because of the key concession that the Kurds are going to be able to check this back. There is no need for airstrikes. Go down to the impacts. Extend across civilian casualties. You're going to be preferring probability here because nebulous scenarios never come true, but the death of one person is always going to be able to happen. We can guarantee you 100% that stopping airstrikes will stop the 52 deaths and the 800 injuries that happened in one strike. You're always going to be preferring those impacts over the other. We have 100% probability, and probability is always going to be key because it is the most real world. It is things that will actually affect people, unlike nuclear scenarios that are never actually going to happen and only in the debate world. We are trying to do policies and talk about impacts that are going to actually come and that we could actually see in our lifetimes, which means that you are always going to be preferring probability, and we have 100% conceded on this, on this impact. Quick question. Yeah. What were you listening to? So I was listening to Aloft by Nickel Creek, uh, <coughs> which is a really, really interesting progressive bluegrass song that's basically about seeing the farmer's daughter and then the farmer's daughter coming after you with a shotgun. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's actually really cool. It's like the most trippy bluegrass music that you might ever see. Sorry for interrupting. It was just no. sounding cool. No, 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 it's cool. Um, so, uh, I end up voting affirmative. I'll go ahead and read this, which is sort of what I said in because this could avoid rambling. Uh, but first, I must determine whether or not this functional competition argument means that the counterclaim makes the disadvantage. It sort of seems like this is where they're staking most of their claim in the PMR. Um, and I, I like the argument when it came out in the MG. Um, and I think they sort of caught on to it. So I'm a very expressive judge. Um, I think it's one of the few things I can offer the debaters in terms of. You know, my engagement, I prefer to be engaging as opposed to just sit back. Um, and it seems to be a fairly interesting double line, which is that if fiat is durable and they win this argument, there's always the risk that civilian casualties could occur, then that would seemingly mean that the counterplan, there, there would never be a strike, and that uh, as a result, the counter, the dissent would occur, right? The dissent would lead to the counterplan, in which case I would affirmative because it's there's no counterplan in the debate. The dissat, you know, links to the counterplan is not unique offense for you, in which case the advantage is the only piece of unique offense at that point. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's right. It makes yeah, sense. Finish. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Right. Um, and then conversely, uh, if strikes still occur, but civilians are neglected, then you may not link to the dissat, but the advantage will still just have to the counterplan. So um, I think that this double line is fairly really accurate. Um, the only response that I get out of the MO and the LOR is that strikes occur under this policy while it's in place. So this is the interesting thing. Uh, which is that the government has all these policies on the books, and I know about this one in particular. They have these policies on the book. It's standard operating procedure, right, but it is neglected, right? Um, and this is actually, I mean, this is privy knowledge, um, and didn't really impact my consideration very much, but I have um, a member of my cohort is a former U.S. commander in the Air Force, and actually was in charge of intelligence for drone operations, and was like, yeah, this policy existed, it was clearly neglected. Um, that doesn't impact into my decision, but just to say, like, this is a this is a narrative to sort of remind you that while the government has these policies, it is difficult to just draw assumptions from what they might mean, which is that there was never a risk of civilian casualties, which is obviously a problem because this policy existed in Iraq and Pakistan, but there were still a large amount of civilian casualties, right? Which is sort of a concern, right? Um, so the first simulation I run through my head is a world in which the strikes still occur, but civilian casualties occur. Uh, in this instance, given the two pieces of defense that is at, which I am buying, which is that the United States second strikes would deter from them from a striking, or deter Saudi Arabia Korea from striking, and the mutually assure, or the mutual defense treaties argument, um, I think those are fairly convincing reasons why the advantage always the dissent. Those arguments are supercharged by the fact that Saudi Arabia would not want to alienate their only allies. You have this argument of why prince, like the next prince and the next secession person, uh, might be anti-American. Uh, this, this I think so. This does a couple of things. One, it problematizes this time frame scenario, in which you sort of indicate that as soon as the plan happens, two hours later. Saudi Arabia has a nuclear weapon. It seems more to be a question of the person who takes over from King Abdullah gets a nuclear weapon. In which case, I'm still kind of convinced that if there there has to be some other events for them to use the nuclear weapon. In which case, while they have the nuclear weapon, the United States will be able to convince them not to use that. That is sort of uh, the the question uh, in MO that later becomes a PMR argument. 
Um, so I sort of think uh, the advantage always that is had in terms of expected number of casualties, uh, civilian casualties in particular, that I could avoid in that instance. Because I think if the United States is able to deter Saudi Arabia from using the nuclear weapon, which seems fairly easy and seems fairly intuitive given that they would literally not exist as a country anymore because the United States would just level them, that there's very, very little risk that the nuclear weapon would ever be used. Well, we probably wouldn't have a plan, but... Yeah, precisely. Uh, and the second is, the sort, sort of second simulation I went through in my head is, uh, which the NISAD thinks the counter plan because strikes couldn't occur, in which case, I guess I'm left without a unique source of offense for either team, and I default to advantage to or presumption. Okay. So, in either scenario, simulation I went through my head, are there any questions? No, not really. Okay, so I have a fairly detailed RFD, which is exactly my thought process yeah. um, about it, which might illuminate things or be equally as interior. So that <laughs> is nice. That um, would you mind if I asked for like specific feedback for? I would not have a speeches? problem with it. How is it okay if we go back to Yes, of yeah. course. Go. Um, do you have experience with me? Because I have not seen you around the circuit very much. No, I mean, this is my second semester. Yeah. Okay, are you a first year then? Um, I'm a transfer. I debated one semester at a JC. Okay, I, well, I, was, I was very impressed. Um, I was very, very impressed. Uh, with that being said, I have a couple of things, which is, uh, I don't know what this ISIS argument you, 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 you sort of make about, you make on the advantage. I don't know what that gets you, because you're sort of, sort of indicating that you, will, you might possibly lose the war to ISIS. Uh, but you have this argument why ISIS will make tree law. That sort of seems discontinuous with what the advantage says. Okay. Um, and the second thing, oh, what was the second thing, which was... Uh, Good luck to you. There was something in particular where I'm just like, no, you should be making this argument the other day. Uh, uh, this is in theory. Uh, where was it? But there was basically an argument where I'm just like, this seems to be more like you're focusing on the line by line and not necessarily thinking about what that argument might be in a larger strategy. So that's the thing you just have to keep asking yourself. Um, I think the debate, I think debate is best thought of as um, a strategy game as opposed to a game of like technical jargony sort of arguments versus arguments. Um, I was always a fan of like just out strategic strategery. <laughs> um, Outplaying. Yeah, uh, which I think sort of. I thought, I mean, I thought I'm glad that you made that sort of functional argument because I'm just like, this seems like one of those things that just makes sense, but doesn't seem to jive with like what should actually matter, right? Yeah. Um, I wish I, I mean, I'll have to think about more specific comments, which case I can get back to you. Um, I can come up to you later in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. You had a clear PMR strategy. That's really the only thing that you can ask for. PMR, right? Yeah. So, you're good. You pick the arguments that you needed to. So, I circle arguments along the way, and you went for the arguments I had circled. So, nice. good job. Thank you. From, uh, oh, just as a side note, they only do this policy for drone strikes. Yeah, yeah we were talking yeah, was, about yeah, was, that. Yeah. So, if like, I, I don't know if I accurately believe this figure, but if like 80% of US strikes are through F 22s. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that stat. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. We noticed that, but then I was thinking that drone strikes are still military, so our plan... I was thinking in terms of the perm when I was looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I, I was kind of struggling with the Saudi Arabia this ad. Like, I, I, I could not think of offense. Neither could I. What do you think would have been a better way to approach that dis ad? Like, I could not think of offense. Because, I mean, like, I'm yeah. A firm, I'm, I'm, a, like, I, I'm not of the opinion that, like, you know... A 0.1% risk of extinction warranty for this 